in making the joint in the mallets that I made in last week's video, I needed to cut the joint into the end of the wood that I was working with. And when I started to figure this out, I was going to use my vertical table on the end of the CNC machine. But in starting to think about it, once the piece got shorter and shorter as I cut the sections off that I was going to use, it was going to become harder and harder to hold this way. So I wanted to come up with a way to hold the shorter lengths of wood that I was actually using on the CNC table itself. So I came up with a way to clamp the piece of wood standing on end on the table. So once I had the design far enough along, I cut out the pieces for it. And it took several passes. I cut all the holes and sort of all of the interior cuts first, as well as the dados that I was gonna use. And then once all of that was ready, I could cut out the actual shapes. Then I could pull that off and the cutting was straightforward. I didn't have any mishaps with that. I had to free a few of the pieces and I cleaned up the edges, although it was in pretty good shape right off the machine. Now I wanted to make some knobs for the hold downs for the two sides of the clamp. So I can drill a, a threaded insert into the center of the knob. Then that, that makes sort of a, a clamp that'll hold the whole system down to the table. So these are the parts and I can start putting it together. And I started with the outermost sections which is a, a flat horizontal surface that gets clamped down to the table via the, the slots in the table. This is what the, the knobs help hold down. Then that horizontal piece gets attached to a series of vertical pieces which make up the jaws of the clamp. And I cleaned up that edge. So the main work holding of this is the two long faces of the clamp. Then on either side of those faces, I have two adjustable pieces of wood that I can move in and out towards and away from the center. And those give a little bit of support to the workpiece in the other direction. So the clamping force of those fences isn't really that strong. It's just there to give a little support. Now this whole system can go on the table and it just slides into the T-slots of the table. And the workpiece can go in. I worked off the center of the workpiece as the zero, zero point for the... And I can find the height to the top of the workpiece and I can cut the end of the piece and it seems to work really well. Luckily for these mallets, the, the longer piece, which is the handles, was seven and a half inches. So it fit below the gantry. Now in changing out a piece, which is where I was really trying to make this quick, I can just loosen the two big bolts, loosen the two knobs that hold one side of the clamp down to the table and open up the jaws and pull the workpiece out, then clean off the sawdust and put the new piece in and then retighten the bolts and tighten the knobs down to the table. And it all goes pretty quick. And if I've cut all my pieces to the same height, then I don't really have to check for the Z height between each piece. And really, I can just put the new piece in place and hit go. And it recuts the new joint. So it seems to work really well. Now just before I let the mallets from last week out the door, I realized I really needed to put some kind of mark on them. And I asked on Instagram what people thought I should do. And I got a lot of different and a lot of good answers. But one that came up quite a bit was to just cut my initials into the mallet with the CNC machine, which I kind of knew in the back of my mind, but I really just needed someone to tell me that. So I would just do the work 
of making it happen. <laughs> I was hoping there would be an easier solution, but there really wasn't. So what I wanted to do is to cut my initials into the handle end of the mallets, which meant holding the mallets vertically with the handle end up. So I modified my vertical clamping system on the vertical table so that it would just have one clamp that would be in just the right spot. And this clamp would hold the head of the mallet and sort of keep it from swinging vertically. So I put that back onto the vertical table. And you can see what I'm going to build up above sitting on the table there. I found a piece of something that I used. <laughs> it might be alder. Anyways, I got it straightened up. So I jointed it and then planed it and then cleaned up the width. And I measured some of the mallets to figure out what the biggest handle knob was. And I got a newly sharpened bit out. And I basically cut a circle that was a little bit bigger than the biggest handle into that piece of alder. I think this is alder. <laughs> and then I cut that to length. It's a little easier to hold when it's longer. And I drilled two holes on each side of the hole that I cut on the CNC machine. And these will be for two big bolts that'll hold this piece together. Then I ripped this piece in half to make it into two halves, each with a, with a half circle in it. And I widened up that cut so that the circle wouldn't be quite complete, so that handles of different sizes would, would fit in that circle. And I made some recesses for the bolt heads, and I glued a little bit of rubber into the circle. Then I drilled some smaller screw holes into one of the sides. And I started to attach that to the end of the CNC table. Then realized I needed to put the bolts in before this is attached to the table. Then this piece can get attached to the table. So you can see how the mallet goes in. Basically that circle will clamp around the end of the handle. And it takes varying sizes of handles, which is what I needed. Now, I wanted to have it so that the Z on every handle was going to be the same, so I made a little jig that I could use to set the height of the handle in relation to the table. So I sanded a little curve into that piece of wood, and then it can sit flat on the table and the handle can, can rise up to meet that curve. Then I can put a shim behind the mallet head and use the clamp to hold that in place. You can never have too many shims in the shop. Now the varying handles sizes meant that I had to adjust the Y axis just a little bit on each one. Now to make the actual mark, I started in Fusion but this wasn't quite coming out right and it wasn't quite what I wanted and when I was doing the cam setup I was getting to a point where it it wouldn't go any further and I, I couldn't get it to work <laughs> so I went into Aspire and it's really set up to do text and to do sign work so it actually did this really well so I made a little dome shape to represent the end of the handle then I could map my initials down onto that curve and it actually wrapped the movement of the spindle over that dome so that the text isn't just flat and it knows to make the font with the pointed router bed. So then after all of that work making the clamp and setting up the file, actually cutting the two letters goes really fast. It's done in probably a minute. I like that it even tried to make the font. So it isn't like a, a, a single line piece of text. It actually has the corners where they should be. And it turned out really nice. I like that it's really simple.
Thanks for watching.